Here's an update on La Nina. Hello, Matt Makins here. Thanks for joining along, subscribing, liking, leaving your comments. Appreciate that feedback. La Nina, during the month of November, in some categories of how you measure La Nina, was one of the weakest we've recorded in over two years. I'll discuss that in just a moment. Again, we're talking about the Enso region, La Nina, because it's colder than average, indicated by the blue shades here. We're looking at sea surface conditions, sea surface temperatures above and below average. So again, here are black boxes representing the ENSO regions of 1.2, 3, and 4. The atmosphere above this, sea level pressure-wise, is one methodology of gauging the strength of La Nina. And in this particular index, it's called the SOI, Southern Oscillation Index. That's the one I'm using here. And you can see the values I plotted monthly averages going back to 1951 is at the top. Let's zoom into the bottom values here. So here's 2022, and we're coming in over to November at only 0 0.5. That's plus 5. I use blues on the shades to represent La Nina. It's a cold phase. You got to go back all the way up into here to right about here to July and June of 2020 to find atmospheric conditions as weak in a La Nina phase as what we recorded in November. So that's where the weakest La Nina in more than two years is coming from, using the SOI. There are other methods out there, other indices. Uh, I like the MEI, that's another good one. Uh, that gauges how the atmosphere is responding to the La Nina or El Nino conditions in the oceans. Now what didn't change very much at all during November or even early December is the overall atmospheric pattern. We're still seeing an amplified ridge. Here's Alaska, see the red colorations? That's much higher heights indicating ridging or warmth. We also have developing warmth areas ridging there over Greenland. And in between, we've sandwiched in this low pressure area. It's keeping the western U.S. and Canada quite cold. And it's the product area. It's that reinforcing area of the cold air that's been driving across the country. And we talked about this pattern in depth in your December weather outlook. Still look for some cold, wintry weather, especially next week, which would be the second to the third week of December, as well as from Christmas into New Year's. It's going to be an active weather month, but again, I talked about that in a previous video with the December outlook. But overall, the atmosphere is still trying to act La Nina. It's still trying to discuss this, if you will, with the ocean. So again, back to our ocean conditions, our Enso region, the ocean is still colder than average here. It's beginning to moderate a little bit in the 1.2 area. That's the one closest to South America. But here we have the four areas, 1.2, 3, 3.4, and 4. In all, we are still very much La Nina as you look at the sea surface temperatures. Very much La Nina. That didn't change really in November. It was the atmosphere's response just above that region that began to change. That can classically happen in November. November is a tricky month because you're coming out of the warm season into the cold. It's when the atmosphere kind of uncouples or decouples from the ocean anyway. It's kind of a chaotic month, a transitional month. We'll see during December and January if the atmosphere's index with La Nina grows or strengthens again to be seen, but we know the ocean conditions are remaining fairly steady in that La Nina pattern. As you look at the forecast, this was just released on Thursday, we're looking at the probability of El Nino or La Nina or neutral conditions, and this is based on multiple models and statistical analysis. So here we have November, December, January, still very much La Nina in the ocean conditions. Again, this is looking at sea surface temperatures, not the atmosphere, sea surface conditions. January, February, March were kind of even. The probability of La Nina in the ocean and neutral, they're even. As you get into the spring and next summer, look at the red bar. That represents El Nino. The probability of El Nino does climb. It's still just below 50% as you look at Ju uh, July, August, and September, but La Nina is way down on the list, and El Nino even tops neutral. So we are transitioning out of this La Nina. Give it some time. But perhaps November's indication is that we're starting to see this all kind of unwind or unravel for La Nina. Now, what does this mean as far as impact across the country? We've been in a strong La Nina or moderate La Nina the last couple of winters, this being the third winter in a row, which in and of itself, a three-peat has only happened two other times, quasi-three, depending on the indices you look at since 1950. So it's rare to get three 
winters of La Nina in a row. What does this mean though? We have had some strong La Ninas. What does a weaker La Nina mean? I had a great question asked to me on Twitter and this person was in Southern California around Malibu I believe and was asking about shouldn't a weaker La Nina be better for us? Help bring in more water? As you look at the research, this was posted in uh, uh, Journal of Applied Meteorology and Climatology not long ago, so it's relatively recent research. You look at a strong La Nina and a weak La Nina in terms of where it's producing surplus water versus deficits. And the red areas and the white, that's a strong deficit from California, Southern California, to the West Texas. That's with a weak La Nina. You can still have that with a strong La Nina, but look at the difference here. I'll just kind of compose these two and try to make it as big as possible. But with a strong La Nina, your driest signal is over Texas and New Mexico. As La Nina weakens, you shift that driest area to the west into Southern California and Arizona. What about wet areas? Well, with a strong La Nina, you're much wetter on average. As you look at the Tennessee and Ohio valleys, sections of the Rockies and the Northern Plains. As La Nina weakens, you're starting to introduce drier areas into that. So a weak La Nina, in some cases, may be better for your area. In other cases, it may be worse for your area in terms of receiving precip. So yes, uh, we're kind of looking and looking at this transition out of a strong La Nina to a moderate and a weaker La Nina, but that does not necessarily mean from a drought standpoint that we will see dramatic increases uh, in productivity there or lessening of the drought, if you will. You have to be patient. Once we get into next summer and next fall and next winter, that's when, if we have El Nino in place, which it looks like we will, but if we do and modeling is accurate and history is accurate, we will be in a much better wetter water situation for next year. But be patient, even with a weakening La Nina now, we still have to wait. So there's the La Nina update as of December. And remember my December weather outlook discussed kind of the ridging pattern, uh, the Greenland blocking, uh, those kind of things. That's in a separate video. Until the next time, Matt Makins here. That's your update on La Nina and the impact as we go throughout winter.